this is a free online training course developed by Google for people like yourself to learn on how to build basic Android apps. This course is made up of units and units are composed of pathways. In this track, we will be focusing on first unit, which is shown here, where it is made up of four pathways. In this session, we will work on the first three, which are intro to Kotlin, create your first app, and also build a basic layout. So you may be wondering what is pathway? It is an ordered sequence to learn specific skill. An activity can be a video, hands-on coding tutorial, also known as CodeLab, an article or quiz. You can see there are at least four activities in the first pathway, and all these activities are meant to help you to reach specific learning objectives by the end of this pathway. There is also a quiz at the end of each pathway to check your understanding of what you have just learned. Here is an example of what a quiz looks like. There are no limits to the number of retries for a quiz, but if you get a question wrong, try to understand what the concept is by referring back to the source material before answering again. Now that you are quite familiar with the learning platform and how the course looks, let's dive into some important concepts that you will be learning about. In this course, you will be learning how to code in Kotlin. Kotlin is a programming language that you will use to build Android apps. It is a modern and popular programming language known for helping developers to be more productive. It allows you to be more concise when writing your code, and you can write safer code that's less prone to errors. So, pathway one of the course is putting more focus on helping you to understand basics of Kotlin. To make it easier for you to learn, you will write your code in Kotlin Playground, which you can access via the web browser. The site looks something like this. You can write your code in this window and hit the green arrow to run it. The result of your code, known as the output, will show up at the bottom of the window, where it says hello world. Moving on to next slide, pathway two is where you start to create your own app. Given that Android Studio has been successfully installed, this is the tool that professional developers use for Android development. This is where you will be writing your Kotlin code and build your apps. In Android Studio, you can also use the Android emulator, which can emulate various Android devices on your computer. The emulator allows you to run your app and it provides almost all capabilities that a real Android device would have. If you do have a physical device and want to use it, there are also instructions in Pathway 2 to get it set up. Lastly, in Pathway 3, you will learn the basic concepts of customizing the user interface of a simple app. The user interface, also known as UI, of your app includes what the app looks like and how the users interact with it. As you could see from here, the layout of an app is the design or arrangement of what the user sees on the screen. In Android, a layout is made up of views. So, here are some examples of types of views that are provided by Android. Text view for displaying text, image view for displaying images, and button to perform some action when being tapped. In this session, we will be mainly focusing on text view and image view, while button will be covered in the next session. Okay, that's it. So now I will pass it to Yishong to guide you all through pathway one, while I will be continuing for pathway two and Akil will be guiding you all through pathway three. All right, thank you. Uh, so let's get started with some really basic problem. So to, uh, right now I'll be, use, I'll be doing unit one, pathway one, uh, Android basics introduction to college. So if you go to the link in the chat, it will take you to, take you to this page. And then, and then you need to click Android Basics Introduction Content, and you'll get this. So uh, right now I'll play a few videos, and then we can get started with Collapse.
Uh, bro, you have to share your sound as well. Oops, my bad. Uh, let's see. Let's do that again. Welcome to Android Basics in Kotlin. In this course, you will learn the fundamentals of how to build Android apps. We are from the Android team at Google, and we'll be your instructors for this course. I'm Dan. I'm Kat, and we'll be here guiding you throughout your journey. And I'm Megan. We'll do our best to explain things clearly with step-by-step -step instructions. It's hard to imagine life without our phones. And in this course, you're going to have a chance to learn how to build an app that runs on one of these. It honestly feels like a superpower to know how to build an app, to take something that's an idea in your head and put it on your phone. And it's not just your phone. There are over 2.5 billion Android devices in the world. That's phones, tablets, TVs, watches, and even cars. Imagine how cool it would be to make an app that your friends can use. The apps that you use on your phone are often quite complex. They have whole companies and teams of engineers working on them. And all those engineers had to start at the beginning. So in this course, we're going to focus on building a series of basic Android apps that can run on a phone. The course is split up into units. Each unit is made up of several pathways. Pathways are composed of videos, code labs, and quizzes. And, drum roll please, you will earn badges along the way. You'll also be building up your developer profile, which you can use to show the skills you've gained throughout this course. By learning the fundamentals of programming and the core concepts in Android, you will have a solid foundation to build off of. You'll learn how to use Android Studio, the tool we use to write our code. And you'll be learning Kotlin, the recommended programming language for developing Android apps. At its core, a programming language is used to tell a computer what you want it to do. It's similar to learning a foreign language, but instead of speaking to people from another country, we're communicating with the computer. We'll get into more details of learning Kotlin later, but first let's talk about what you need to start this course. To get started, you need a computer and an internet connection so you can download Android Studio. You don't need any prior programming experience, but we do require that you have basic computer and math skills. Knowing basic math is useful when you're programming because of the problem-solving skills involved. It's also helpful to have an Android device, phone or tablet, to test your app on. If you don't have one, that's okay. We'll show you how to simulate an Android device on your computer with something called an emulator. It's also great to be familiar with using Android apps. If you haven't used Android before, you'll learn this along the way. Above all, the most important requirement is your motivation and willingness to learn. It's going to be a challenging but rewarding process if you stick with it. You may be asking, can I get a job as an Android developer after this course? Well, the answer is not quite. We're going to prepare you with the basics, and there are more advanced classes you can take and more practice you should do on your own to pursue the career path of a developer. Now, you might be asking, how long will the course take? That really depends on how much you already know and how much time you can invest in learning the material. Anywhere from a few weeks to a few months is realistic. No matter where you come from, this journey will be challenging, interesting, and we hope also fun. By the end, you will have built a collection of apps that will show you a glimpse of what's possible with Android. We are super excited. Super excited! We're super excited that you've decided to join us, and we welcome you to this course. Welcome! And one more video before I can begin. Welcome to Unit 1, the beginning of your amazing journey. In this unit, you will learn important concepts in Kotlin and Android development to get you set up for success. This unit is split up into four pathways. In the first pathway, we will dive right into learning some basics in a programming language called Kotlin. Kotlin is a modern programming language. It's efficient to write and has features that help prevent mistakes in your code. It's rapidly becoming one of the most loved programming languages in the world, and we at Google recommend it for building Android apps. In the second pathway, we'll help you set up your computer. We will teach you how to use the same tool that professional Android developers use to build their apps. It's called Android Studio, and you'll be installing that on your computer. Once it's set up, we'll walk you through how to create and run your first Android app. This is always a magical milestone. In the third pathway, we'll make a birthday card app. 
You'll get to customize the app for someone special in your life and surprise them with it. In the fourth pathway, we'll learn how to make an app that has an on-screen button that can be clicked. You'll write Kotlin code for how the app will behave when the user taps the button. This will unlock infinite possibilities for the types of apps you can create. Don't worry, we know it's a lot, but we'll be guiding you through the pathways and we're confident that you can do this. It's normal to feel overwhelmed with all this new information, so take it bit by bit. It takes time to learn and digest the material. With each app you create, you will gain more confidence in the skills you are building. Before we begin, let's double check that you have everything you'll need. You'll need a computer with internet access that you can install Android Studio on. Make sure that your computer meets the requirements linked below. To see your app in action, it's helpful to have an Android device and a USB cable to connect it to your computer, but it's definitely not required. Let's get started! Okay, so let's, let's start on the first code lab. So just open, just click on, uh, take the code lab and open in a new window, a uh, new tab, and then click on this link, which will take you to the playground. Uh, Playground is like an interactive editor that uh, doesn't require you to install anything, so you can run like coding code and get the result out here. So this is what we're we'll using for pathway one. Uh, so so what? So we have the code section of this window where our coding code is written. We have this play button here, which we can run uh, what we wrote, and we have the output section here where you know anything that our program outputs, we just can see it here. So <clears throat> you're of course free to modify this. So we can, for example, change it to say "Happy Birthday" for example, and you can you can change it to say whatever you want. But in this case, "Happy Birthday" is what I'll use. And if you run this, you can see that it says "Happy Birthday." So let's 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 go over this uh, three lines. So f u n is how you declare a function in Kotlin. Uh, function is you can think of it like a list of instructions or a box that you put a value in and get something out something else out. Uh, main is the name of the function. Then you have these two parentheses, an open brace, the code you want to write, uh, the instructions you want to write, and the closing brace. Uh, any questions so far? If um, not, so guys, like, continue. feel free, feel free to like when whenever the speaker asks you questions, you guys can also ask them directly from the mic itself, or ideally on the chat box. Okay, but I, I assume I can continue. So let's go on. So obviously a program that just says happy birthday is not very really useful, but we can we can add our own lines. So you for example add the name of your friend. Maybe you want to say, oh, get age. So you are 25. If you run this, um get this. Happy birthday, Chelsea, you are 25. Now, if you make a mistake, uh, you can tell because when you attempt to run it, uh, you get red highlight and an exclamation mark. So let's say it's unresolved reference because it thinks that this is uh, this 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 is meant to be something else, but we want it to be text, so we'll just wrap it in double quotes. And we run it, you can see it fixes it. So it comes happy birthday, you are 25. And well, that, that's it for the very first code. But any anything you're confused about, you can ask it now. Don't worry, this is a beginner course, so there's no there's no judgment if you if you think your question is stupid or simple. Feel free to unmute yourselves and just put out your question. And also, um, if you put out your question on the chat box, the support team. Uh, would be happy to help as well. Okay, so 
if if you have no questions, nice. If you have no questions, we can go on to creating a birthday message in Kotlin. So just open up the code lab. Go to this link again, and we can start coding uh, this code lab. So let's duplicate this. All right, so what they want us to do now is to replace this text with happy birthday rover. And they want us to add two more lines that say, you are already five. And five is the very best age to celebrate. Exclamation mark. Okay, then we run this. We get, we get what we expect. Happy birthday, Rover. You're already five. Five is the very best age to celebrate. But now they want us to add a birthday cake. So we can just insert this below. For birthday cake is exactly how it works from the top. It just prints exactly what is between these two curly braces. If you run this, you can see that it says the message and then the cake. Also, note that uh, Colin runs everything top to bottom. So we reorder this. You can see the cake moves up two lines. So say you want to you know, give an explanation in case you come back to this code later and don't remember what it's supposed to do. So you can use double forward slashes to uh, create a comment. So let's print a cake. Now comments are ignored by your program. So this is purely just for human use, purely for you to read it and understand what's happening over here. Now if we didn't use It didn't use a comment. You can see that it's not valid code, so we get an error. But if we put a double slash, Colin ignores it. So this is very useful for say if you wrote if you wrote some really complex code, you can you can write comments for it so that if you come back to it later, you still understand what you wrote. Now uh, Colin has something called variables. And it's how you can store data uh, in the program. So for example, we can set h to 5. So val is how you say, okay, I want a variable that won't change. You're going to give a name to this variable. And then you're going to say, okay, I want to store the number 5 into h. So using this variable, we can actually put this into, uh, we can actually use this for print. Statements. So if you replace five here with dollar sign, open curly brace, H, close curly brace, and run this, you can see it still works. It, it just like uh, inserts it and replaces this. So we can do the same for the other one. And double check it works. And it does. Now, because this is a uh, variable, we can change. We can change what's actually stored into it. So maybe instead of uh, five years old, you want to say you're this many days old. So we can say five times three hundred sixty-five. Now we run this now. You can see it gets replaced for both of these lines. And you can see how variables are convenient because you can change like a value in one place instead of having to change it everywhere you, you want to use, say, this number. Now we can modify this message to make more sense. So we say days old and days old here. There we go, that means no one will be confused. I think you're 183, 100, say 1,825 years old. Uh, so you can store more than just numbers inside uh, variables. You can also store strings, or you can also source text. 
save our name. You can do the exact same thing as you did for page. You can just replace this. You can see it still works. It still prints the robot out. And now using using this, we can add a little bit more onto this line and say, "You're already eight days old." And then name. So you run this, and you get. You're already 1,825 days old, Rover. So you can have as many of these as you want inside your string. You can even repeat it multiple times if you feel the need to. Uh, not, not that it would make much sense in this case. Just an example. So let's double check. Yeah. So any questions so far? So yeah, uh, one other yeah. question is that variables are used to store values that can store data, which can be changed whenever needed. Yes. But in this case, yeah. uh, I think Yishan, you can explain the difference between well and var, right? Uh, I can. <laughs> Should I do so now? Uh, I mean. Variables are usually used to store values. Yes, you're correct. And it can be changed whenever needed. So basically it's to stop uh, the unnecessary repetition of, uh, in this case, the number, the age. So, yep. Yeah, it's useful also because like, let's say we didn't do this and we put Rover instead, just like that, for, for both of these lines. Then if you want to change the name, we're going to change it in both here and here. But with variables, we can just change this and we, our changes will be displayed over here. Yep. Ah, yes. Uh, for, ver for, for variables, you do, it's optional. You can, declare, you can declare its type, but you don't have to. Uh, for functions, though, you, you absolutely need to declare. Uh, yeah, thanks. But, but we'll get we'll get to that later. And, and yes, uh, val means value. Now, well, there are no other questions. We can continue on to number four. All right, so we're gonna make a border for our birthday message. Uh, but we're actually not gonna use any of this code. So we're gonna make a new playground. Oh, as far as I know, the play button is the only, only thing you can use to run the code. Yeah, it's very annoying. Okay, so this is, these are three lines of filling, just a nice little border uh, using equal signs, a message and more equal signs. So you run this, you get what we expect. Nice bordered message. Now, we're going to introduce other functions now. So we've always been coding stuff inside main, and main is what uh, Calder will automatically run for you. But you can also make your own functions. So let's say we wanted something to help us make this border, right? We can make a new function using fun and border. Now, like how main is the name of this function? The name of this function is print border. And it's 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 it's, it's uh, written out this weird way because you cannot have spaces in function names. Uh, so so instead, the compromise is that you capitalize the first letter for every other word because this will be much harder to read if you if you mash them all together. Uh, this 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 method of name is called camel case. And like, like main, we can put whatever code we want to run between these braces. So just enter. Now we can just move 
is, and the function is exactly the same. So you can, you can, you can just move the trend line in here and it will just as well. And we can replace these with trend border. If we run it, we should get exactly the same output. So how it works is that it calls the function. So basically it just runs whatever's inside here. In this case, just this print line. It, it runs this, so it prints the happy birthday line. And then it runs this again. So the same thing as the first time, it just does this. And output is exactly the same as last time. Uh, can someone else answer that question? Take this question down there. I'll just continue on. It's a nicer call. It's a nicer Java. It, it's just nicer. I like it better. Okay, so this is fine. It works. But maybe we could write it in a nicer, clearer way because I have no idea how many uh, equal signs are here right now. So we can use something called a loop. So a loop just runs the same line of code uh, as many times as you want it to. So in this case, the loop we're using is called repeat. And this, oh, oh wait, we're going to repeat it 23 times. So like functions, you can just wrap whatever code you want to run inside these braces. So in this case, we just remove this up. And replace this. Actually, no, this is not. So let's just run this. You can see it's a huge mess right now because of one E1 character. And number two is because we're using something called print line. So each time this one prints, it goes in like, imagine like this, this imaginary cursor, like, like a word nothing, right? It prints out the line and then press enter, it goes to the next. So what we can do is actually just remove ln, which stands for line, and just go print. If you do this, I don't think it's better. It just prints all of these that happy birthday. Now, like, 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 like we just said just now, print doesn't uh, doesn't move it onto a new line, which is why after this function runs, this one gets printed on the same line. So you can fix that by just adding an uh, empty print line there. And now everything is nicely formatted again. Now, functions that also take arguments. Uh, what I mean by that is that you can pass a value to a function. Like, if the function needs it, you can pass a value to it, and you can use it and change its output somehow. So in this case, maybe we want to not use an equal sign. Uh, we could just copy this function, right? And just change the symbol that it uses in here. But another way we can do it is that we can say, okay, I want this function to take a value inside. So what we'll do first is we'll just set up uh, the text we want to use. So in this case, we can use a percentage sign. And then we can try to give this percentage sign to the function. Uh, this, won't work, this won't work right now. So you're going to run this, you can see, oh, it highlights our errors and it says too many arguments. Now this happens because uh, the arguments is, is a lot to take. It's placed between these two parentheses. And in this case, it's empty. So Colin is a bit confused because we, we just told it it doesn't need arguments, and yet we gave it an argument. So we can fix that by just saying, OK, uh, this is a border, and it's a type string. Now, a string is just text. Okay, so any anything you see in double quotes is a string, it's just text. Now we run this again, you can see, okay, there's no error this time, but it's not actually changing the symbol, and that's because we haven't actually used it yet. So if you go over this uh, exclamation mark here, it says parameter border is never used. So you can fix that by just replacing this with border. And here you go, it has changed the borders of both of these lines. Uh, just, just FYI, this does not need to match this. So I could name this, say, symbol, right? And as long as, as long as this matches this, it's fine. But, but in this case, we'll just use border. Now, 
Now the best way of doing it this way is that if you want to change the border, we could we could just switch out this thing for anything else. So in this case, let's just use a dash. And you can change it just like that. Now, what if we wanted to use a multi-character uh, border? This method won't work anymore because if we just added just one more character, you can see it's double the length. It doesn't work. So maybe we can ask print border to take in the number of times it should repeat uh, its input. So let's make a new, let's make two new variables, or I'll just or just change border actually. Change border to use this new four characters. Is it four characters? No, no, oh, looks like six. Six character border. And we'll make a new variable for times two three. We'll say four. And then we'll try to pass it to print border again. Uh, nope. to repeat. Same problem as last time, we try to run this. This will work because we only expect one argument so we're passing into see too many too many arguments. So all we do to fix that like last time is just create a new parameter for times to I'm going to say int. Now int is short for integer, basically it just means a number. So just put int and we can replace this 23 with just times to repeat. So now it will just keep running this code times to repeat times. So you run this, you can see, happy birthday, we have news uh, border symbols. Yes, you, you always need to say the type of parameters. Uh, you cannot omit the type. You can only omit the type for variables. Uh, anyway, let's continue. So this is not centered, so just gonna add two spaces here. And run it again, it's nice. It should be nice and centered now. Any questions? There we go, now it's a bit. Oh, 23 was just the, the number of times to repeat this. So if you wanted, if you wanted to run like five times, you would do repeat five. In this case, we wanted to run four times. So we actually want rather run times to repeat times. So we put it here. And in this case, times repeats four. So we, run it, we keep running this code four times. No other questions, then we can continue on. Okay, <laughs> the, the text center is, was just just adding two spaces. See, one space, two space. Uh, main, okay, so the main function is... Uh, uh, check that you, that you copied the border text properly because if it's off, if it's like off by one, then yeah, it won't, it won't be centered anymore. See, uh, you can see like uh, imp incorrectly copy copying this border text will mess up. Yeah, main is a function. It's a it's a it's a fun it's a normal function. It's just that call in will call it for you automatically. Like if we didn't if we didn't run this, we didn't run this, this function will not run at all. Main is special and that call in will run it for you. Yeah, there's no questions, we can start on making a cake. <coughs> um. 
the okay, so they want us to start from scratch from, for this one. So we'll just duplicate this again. Oh no. Ah, okay, there we go. So they want us to create two variables. So now a equals 24, L layers equals 5, and three functions. Print, cake, top, also H. Print, cake, bottom, both H and layers. All right. Um, so we, we've commented out these three lines because we haven't actually written the functions for these yet. So you run this, you can see no errors. Also no output because we haven't actually got any print statements going on. But at least you have no errors. If you were to uncomment like say any of these, try to run it, we'll get errors because we haven't written functions yet. So we'll go fix this now by writing the code for print cake top. So just like last time, we'll always start with fun. And Exactly the same as right there. Now we take in a single parameter, so we have one called h, and it's going to be a number. So it's an integer, it's an int. Now we want to have as many candles as you as your h. So we're going to have twenty four candles, and we don't want the candles to be right on the edge of the cake because that's going to be there's a risk of it toppling over. So we're going to repeat h. Last two, so you can just do you can just do normal maths just like this, and then print the cake top, but in this case is using an equal sign, and we're gonna make a new line, new line. There we go. If we run this, you see no output because we need to uncomment this one first, and now we run this, you can see a nice single line of equal sign. It'll look better once you finish this. So let's work on printing candles. So same thing, print cake candles, page, in. Okay. Now, the thing about the candles for this cake is there's going to be two characters tall. It's going to have like the flame and it's going to have the candle body. The thing about, thing about printing uh, any text, right, is that it goes line by line. So we, we have to print all the flames first and then we can print the, the candle body. So you cannot print flame, body, flame, body, flame, body. So first thing we do is we'll print an empty empty space because remember we've added, we've added like a margin from both sides to prevent the candles from falling over. Then we'll just repeat this h times. We'll use the color symbol for the flame. And then we'll go to a new line so that we can print the candle bodies. Same thing again, we're gonna add some margin. We're gonna repeat H times, we're gonna print the candle bodies. And then we're gonna go into a new line. Okay, and that's the code right there. If we run this uh, after uncommenting this. Should work. There we go. As you can see, because of these print statements, we have nice single margin on both sides. Okay, now finally, the most important part is the actual body of the cake, the bottom. This one takes two parameters. Okay, so create a new function. What's it called again? Print cake bottom. Print cake bottom h, which is an integer, and layers is also an integer, both numbers. Yes. Now we, we're going to have a multi-layer cake, we're also going to have a cake that's going to be h plus 2 width, right? So let's just do that one first. We'll repeat h plus 2, because it wouldn't make sense if like the top of the cake had like no nothing supporting it. Then we're gonna use the add symbol for this for the body, and then we're gonna go into a new line. I run this, we get a 
very miserable game, very short. So what we can do instead is that we can actually repeat this repeat. So what we can do is we can type repeat layers This on the, so what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this entire block of code layers times. And we're going to repeat this line of code each plus two times. So we run this. See the proper birthday cake now. Any questions so far? Oh, yeah, right, my, my, my bad. <laughs> uh, you won't be able to see everything, though. I don't think you can see main, right? Let's just see. Yeah, I can see this. Hey, you, you feel free to ask me to re explain something here. If I wasn't clear, or you think I was going too fast? Oh no, there are multiple types of loops and calls and just this is just one of them. We just we just chose to use this one. Um print line. Ah, okay. So remember when I said that print doesn't actually go into a new line? So like if you're on a word document, it's like you're typing but you never press enter yet and you're not at the uh, end of the page. So without this print line, let's get rid of it here. Let's get rid of it here. Or, or, you know, just FYI, you can also comment. You can also comment to like make the code not run. So you run this. You can see that we get like a really, really long cake, but it's not, it's not tall at all. It's because we're not, uh, we're not moving the imaginary cursor to the next line. So we do this. It, it prints properly. So what happens is that it's, it's running this h, h plus two times. Then we're like going onto the next line, and then and then we can continue on. I hope I I hope that was clear enough. Nice. Any other questions? Okay, we'll just let everyone uh, experiment around the code if they want. You can like print something else. You can, you can like modify a few variables, see what happens. And uh, if, if there's still no questions to that, we'll go on to the next pathway at 7.50. So, uh, let's move on to the next module, which will be uh, conducted by Shawan. Shawan, over to you. Yeah. Yep. Okay, thanks Yishong and Saji. Right now we will move into pathway two and let's watch the video first. In this course, we'll be using Android Studio on our computer to help us create our Android apps. Android Studio is what's known as an IDE or Integrated Development Environment. If this is your first time working with an IDE, you can think of it as being like a workshop with a lot of tools. These tools help you write your code and lay out how your app will look on the screen. It shows you a real-time preview of what your design will look like as you create each screen. And similar to how Google Docs checks your spelling, Android Studio checks for errors in your code as you type. It also gives you suggestions to help you code faster. And of course, as you create your app, you'll want to see it in action. Android Studio builds and runs your app, either on an actual Android device or on something called an emulator, a tool that allows your computer to simulate an Android device. Android Studio is an IDE because it integrates multiple developer tools together, doing a lot of the heavy lifting for us. Without it, 
the development process would be much longer and it would be easier to make all sorts of mistakes. As you create apps in this course, you'll learn how to use Android Studio and get plenty of practice with it. If you're curious, take a look at the linked Android Studio documentation. Let's, Let's go, go write, write apps! apps. Um, may I know like have everyone installed Android Studio? Because I think Sajid and our team has mentioned that we will be using Android Studio in Pathway 2 and Pathway 3. So yeah, I assume that everyone has installed it and I will just directly go to Android Studio and show the step that's going to create your first app. Um, so first, okay, I need to share my Android Studio screen. Has everyone downloaded it? If no, I think it will be uh, quite time consuming. Okay, nice. Uh, share screen, Android Studio. Okay, so first thing you will need to do maybe is to check your video SDK where I think uh, Sajid already sent a video for you guys to self-check and then press on start new empty activity press next and this is like the name for the app so okay I think I'm not going to do happy birthday since today is Valentine's Day I don't want to do let me do Valentine's Day like happy V day <laughs> and then language yeah is in Kotlin and also for the API you guys need to click on the API 19 and then finish okay. and then at the main here you will see there is the main activity thing like every time when you open it you have to like uh, wait for the gradle build to finish and then you guys can continue with it so after coming into here you guys need to set up your AVD where you guys need to press on this icon AVD manager and then create a virtual device and the instruction actually calls us to pick on pixel 3xl press next and then choose on the queue yeah and then press next this is like basically name for your device so after you have choose the Pixel 3 XL and also Q, you guys can just press on finish. And you can see that here are the device that you guys have set up just now. So uh, for the testing, you guys could just press on this play button. Hmm? There is something wrong with my app. What? Okay. Uh. Sean, they say you say too I fast. Think... Hey, run again. Ah, <laughs> huh? too fast? Ah? Okay, okay. I start again. Uh, from where? Do you guys need to need me to start from the very first or from the AVD? I assume the yes is for AVD. Oh, no. Okay, very first. <laughs> very first? Okay, okay. Let's just start very first. <laughs> okay. So, I'll just close my project first. And... Yeah, you, you guys, first step is to press on start a new Android Studio project. And you guys will see a list of different activity here. But in this case, you will be using empty activity, this one, and then press next. So far, okay. And this is the name for your project. So let's say you create something like happy, Happy Valentine's Day. Then in this case, you guys have to choose Kotlin. And for the minimum SDK, pick on API 19, which is KitKat. And go finish. Why do I have different interface? Huh. But project template. You mean at the very start? But do you do you able to create the empty activity? 
Okay. Okay. Project template. Project template. Yishong hmm. and Akil, do you guys have any idea on this? Um, yeah, so it, it should take you to, um, so once you um, first uh, open Android Studio and you are presented with welcome to Android Studio, you should have this uh, plus icon called uh, create a new project. And uh, then the very next screen, you can choose empty activity. Um, it, I don't think it will take you to, can I pick system image R? Yeah, it should first show uh, empty activity. I don't think it shows anything else apart from that. Uh, no, so under select a project template, there are many different templates. So the one that we are referring to is on the far right, first row, far right, which is empty activity. So you guys should be able to uh, see this as soon as you press uh, create a project. Monica has a question. Can I pick system image R? Like what? What does it mean by system image R? No, so it's system Android image R. R. Android R. Uh, you can, but if you already have it downloaded, sure. If you don't, you should just pick Q because that's what we're gonna use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Um, I think you can try it because uh, I think you need to make sure you have enough memory because uh, emulator actually is out. Emulator and Android Studio itself actually is out a lot of memory. You, you can try downloading R, I think. It shouldn't be issue, right? Yishong and Akil. As long yeah, as, as the emulator is there. No, I did my whole thing with R, so I, I know it works. <laughs> <laughs> what? Huh. Okay. Yeah. I think I think you any, can try, you can just try Monica. Yeah, any SDK is fine as long as you don't have to download it right now because if it's gonna download, it's gonna take a long time. Yeah. But as long as you have any SDK right now, you can uh, use whatever it is. Okay, uh, for others, um, you guys are following like, um, for the AVD, you guys need to Click on, oh, why is my AVD not showing? What's that? Oh, you guys need to click on this and then create a virtual device and pick Pixel 3 XL and press next and pick Q. And then this is the name for your own Android device and then just finish. And after you click finish, you should have a Android device showing here. This is the one that we are going to use to run the Android Studio um, layout and text view, image view later. Let me try if mine is working. Huh? Oh my god, mine is suddenly having issue. Oh, GG. Yes. No. You should delete a few of your stuff. <laughs> ah, the one, ah. Last time uh -huh. I used for intro to mobile, oh, for those who are taking intro to mobile app, uh, 2081, if you are coming into Monash and taking 2081, you guys will be using Android Studio as well. So maybe next time you guys don't have to go through the hassle of setting up this thing again. Because setting up yeah, this thing is quite a pain for me last time. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Mine, this work. Okay, okay. Okay, it's working. It's fine. Okay. I think the first time running the emulator, you guys also have to wait for a while for it to set up and come into online. 
to be honest, when I when the first time I set out emulator, I get a bit amazed by the virtual device. I feel like wow, so <laughs> so young, like okay, it's a bit cool, ah. Is everyone following through? After clicking, search. I wish Zoom had a feature to reply individually. No, oh, because see, webinars mode for Zoom, right? It has like a QA and Q and A thing where you can like answer each question individually. But the problem is, webinar mode is not available without asking for administrator approval. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it means we have like ask for Nash to like <laughs> give us some webinar privileges. Yeah. Which, which might cost them more money. So, yeah. <laughs> So, oh, my Android is running quite slow today, though. Oh, what's that? Eh? No, it's here. Ha! Nah, da -da. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think for the setting image and the text view, little echo will be guiding you all. Have fun. This one is the most basic thing and it is really quite fun. You know, like today, another, another objective of coming into this session is like, uh, today's Valentine's Day. If you have someone you want to impress, you can do this and show him or <laughs> be like, oh, you see, I could, eh? I could. <laughs> yeah. Especially okay, uh, I think, <laughs> no, for the people but... they want to impress, not me. Yeah, exactly, exactly. exactly. <laughs> um, so I guess hopefully everyone uh, is following along and has come to this stage. If not, you can always unmute your mic and ask away free field yeah maisha has used r yeah that's fine oh, actually guys you guys can just unmute yourself because i know sometimes sometimes during chat might be hard for you guys to explain the issue you're having right now yeah, yeah. so don't be shy Is four minute loading normal? Uh, I think it it is possible. Absolutely, Absolutely. with Android Studio, anything is possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not it, it, it's not needed in a good way. Yeah, because uh, yeah, um. <laughs> Android Studio is quite heavy, and it also depends on your computer as well. So, yeah. Uh, don't worry, uh, when, next time you start the emulator will be much faster because it doesn't have to go through the entire book process. But yeah, your first time you're launching this is going to be real slow. Yep. That's why we wanted you guys to uh, do it beforehand so that uh, mm. the required packages would be installed and everything that needs to be built, like the Gradle, uh, would be built as well. So... Um... Hello, hi. Hi. Uh, Hi. You like what you asked the pixel and uh, the virtual devices. However, it's just like it's not loading. It just says that it's creating, but then nothing happens. Yeah. Mm, do you want to share your screen? Like we could fix it if it is not a huge issue because uh, we don't actually want to drag this session over 10, 10 p.m. So yeah, ju just share your screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, guys, Android Studio will uh, heat up your PC or Mac, either way. And Because uh, yep. Android Studio is hot. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah. H A X M O. Oh, this issue. Yep. So, um, who share? Okay. So Eunice, do Eunice, you, um, yeah. so regarding this issue, um, unfortunately, you have to uh, uh, edit some BIOS settings. 
after you install, you try installing HAXM first. And if that doesn't work, you have to first, uh, like it'll, it'll run through, it'll, we have actually uh, released a, I think a Word document, uh, Google Docs, yeah. that explains the same issue. Yep. So, so it is technical that I need to install this thing. Yes, you need to install this okay. first. Uh, by default, it should be installed, but then for some reason, uh, it's not okay. Oh, okay. Uh, click finish. Okay. I think this will take up quite some time, right? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it will take up quite some time. Have you referred to the uh, docs and the video that Sajid has sent to group. Are you in WhatsApp group? I think not. But You're not in the WhatsApp group? About having a document and a video. Uh, Sajid, I think you can just share again the doc uh, at the chat there so that maybe they can refer to it. Uh, um, I'll just invite you to your uh to the whatsapp group could you pm yeah, me your number my... just pm me uh, oh i think Zuyuan, Zuyuan already posted the whatsapp group link you can just join the, oh yeah okay. you can just join uh, yeah. and then i'll just resend the stuff again so that you have you can uh, see yep no worries so, uh, um, stop <laughs> yeah, yes. I can just stop. Mm, thank you. I think Singri asked the chat stream. Sorry? What, Suyuan? Uh, there is another person who wants to share the screen. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Oh, Singri, yeah, yeah, just share your screen. Oh, VTX. VTS is also included in the doc file. Mm. Uh, Zinri, are you are you in the WhatsApp group? Um, guys, you guys need to join the WhatsApp group. The Zuyun already sent the WhatsApp group link, so you guys need to join that. And I think Sajid will resend the video and doc for you guys to set up. Yep. But uh, to be honest, you guys might need some time to set up, but we couldn't stop because we don't really want to drag over 10 p.m. So for those who are ready, I think Akil can just move on to the next half. Sure. Uh, everyone else is okay? If anyone's still having any issue, you guys can still like uh, tell us what issue you are having. And if it isn't included in the doc, I think we might have a quick look. But we're actually racing with time. But make sure you guys join the WhatsApp group. Yep. Okay, so I'll go ahead and start the next pathway. Okay, so you guys can hear me, I hope. Yes, so, can. Okay. Yes. Yes. Awesome. So thank you, Shawan. And guys, so as if it's not iterated enough. So my name is Akhil again. So I'll be taking you guys through pathway three. And I hope that you all have created your first Android app and you all all have that emulator screen on and it's very exciting. So let's move on to make uh, a create a basic layout, right? So let's jump into it. So I will be following uh, 
this uh, the code labs. Uh, so I'll first play the video and then we I'll finish up the code labs and then you guys can question me if you'll have any issues. So without further ado, I'm just I hope I shared with audio. So let's see if you guys can hear me. The first step in creating an app is to have an amazing idea. Hmm, amazing idea. Let's create an app that celebrates my favorite holiday of the year, my birthday. Okay. Now before we can go and build an app, we need to know what goes into it. Just like when you cook a meal, you need to think about ingredients and how you want to put them all together. In this video, we'll talk about what makes a great app and plan for what will go into our app. You'll sketch out your own awesome birthday card app, which you'll build by the end of this pathway. So how do we get started? Before we start drawing up this fabulous birthday card app, let's take a step back and think about what makes a great app. Think about an app you really love using. What about it you love? Well, it's probably really effective. It's really clear about what you need to do. The app is also likely to be efficient. There aren't any unnecessary steps in getting from what you want to accomplish to having it done. I bet your favorite app is beautiful. This is subjective, but to me, that means that the app has a simple and organized layout. And the app is probably also accessible. It's designed in a way that makes it easy for you to use. So there you have it. That's the ultimate goal, the ride into the sunset. Before you worry about your app being effective, efficient, beautiful, and accessible, you have to decide what job needs to be accomplished. You don't need any programming for this part. Take a moment and think about a birthday card you received. What was cool about it? They're silly. They're interactive. They have fun pictures. They sing songs. Feel free to pause this video and write down your own ideas. Don't worry, we'll still be here. Okay, so you guys, uh, make sure you guys have some idea of what you all want to write and, you know, a message and stuff like that, yeah? So I just make a note of it on your, on your phone or something like that. So this is what we will uh, try to create on the screen. Okay, so what do you think is important to add into your birthday card app? Honestly, I can't tell you what you think is special. However, there are some common things that all birthday cards have in common. A happy birthday message. A greeting with the name of the person. Maybe their age. And you want to tell them who the card is from and sign it with your name. So with that in mind, here's the birthday card app that we'll be building together in this pathway. It has a large image and text laid out on the screen. Think about how you can customize this for someone in your life. What image would you use? What message would you write? Sketch your app out. Draw out different ideas on how your card might look. Get creative and use your imagination. Okay, awesome. So, I hope like a uh, majority of you at least have your Android book. Like, is it like, is, like do you all have everything okay so far with the Android Studio? Uh, feel free to either text or open your mic, guys. So. Okay, so, okay, so let me start over from the top. Um, you can all see my screen, yes? Yes, yes. Uh, any okay awesome so this is the first thing you will see uh, as you open under studio and exactly how Sharon described it so let's go on to create our first uh, new project once again and I'd want to I want you guys to click on empty activity once again and over here so now, since today is a special day, maybe let's follow Sharon's idea and go ahead creating our Valentine's Day greeting. 
So whatever you write here will be the name of your app. And also it will be displayed on the top bar of your, uh, like it'll be on the, it'll be displayed on the top bar. And let's go ahead, choose API 19. And the reason for this is because you'll see, uh, if you click on uh, this help me choose option, you can actually see the proportions of Android used on all of their devices. So like Android 10 is only on 8.2% of their devices. So this is, yeah. So like I said, Android, so the reason why we chose 19 is because it has a, a high adoption rate. So let's go on and click finish. And we're gonna be introduced to the editor, the IDE. So it's like always, it's gonna build your Gradle and it'll take some time for all of the, like everything to get set up. And let's just wait for a few seconds. All right. So the reason mine is fast is because I have actually opened Android Studio before and I have uh, made, I've run apps on this. So that's why it's, it doesn't have to install a lot of, a lot of prerequisites. So are you guys okay so far? Uh, everyone okay? Like you guys can uh, message or open your mic. Okay, so I hope like a majority of you all have this screen on, I, uh, at least on this screen with no bar, load, no loading bar here. Okay. Okay. So the first thing you know, need to know about the Android Studio user interface is that over here is you have the directory, uh, your project directory, which has everything you need, uh, all the files regarding your project. And usually uh, this is where you do the core, where you code all of the instances and all of that, but we won't be looking into this for this workshop. We'll move it on to the next. So the main thing you need to go is to the activity main.xml. And yeah. So you might be wondering what, what these two screens are. And uh, so this is just the user layout. So ideally, I want to first run the app and show you what happens, uh, like how the emulator starts up. So I'm going to run the app first. So did y'all all get something like this? Like something that says, hello world. Okay, no. Uh, has the application, uh, like has the application opened yet? Nope. Uh, it's probably because of uh, Android Studio once again. So I, is your, like, do you have uh, a minimum of at least eight GB of RAM because uh, yeah, Android Studio is a RAM hogger and uh, okay, awesome. Okay, let's look into it. So do you like, could you tell me like what, what's on your screen right now? How to open main activity. Uh, you, just, you just click on the tab. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, I think you just have to wait for a bit and uh, just in the meantime, just, uh, or you can just try to try to close the emulator using this cross and uh, open it once again. Uh, as in, yeah, click on the play button once again and see if it opens, yeah? Awesome. Okay. So let's, so I'll just give you all a bit of theory um, because you'll need to understand what's, what's what and what's whatever is going on on the screen. So it's going to be easier for you all to understand. So let everything run in the background and let's look into the UI. So the first thing you need to know is this is a user interface 
and whatever element you place on this white screen will be directly uh, displayed on the emulator that will run. So how it works is, is uh, a user interface, uh, they have uh, like, so the user interface has a bunch, bunch of elements. Like you can see here, this is a text element. I can just move it around and it's called a text element. So we can have like, we can have text, images, buttons, all sorts of mumbo jumbo, whatever you want, right? So we can have all of that and they're all, yeah, we can rename the app. I'll show you how to do it later. So we can, uh, we can have a bunch of elements on the screen. So all of these elements in the screen, they're called views. So like this is called a text view and this is a button. And like that, we have a bunch of other views like image views and so many others. Okay, so, so the whole, uh, so Android, should, uh, so uh, the user interface, it, it needs something called a layout or a group. So for example, we have, we have this text view it all, uh, the only way it can be in this layout is if it's in a group and that group is called a constraint layout. So if you open the, um, if you open the, uh, the pathway, you'll, and the first code lab, you can actually have a very, there's a very brief explanation of what a view is and you can go through it in your own time but I don't want to get into it because it's just too much of uh, reading. But all, all, that's, all that it says is that it's, you need to have all of your views, which is the text view in this case, within a layout or a group. So constraint layout is nothing but a type of group that allows you to uh, move elements inside it as flexible as you want. So I'm gonna stop and ask you guys, like if your guys are any in confusion or you are like, am I going too fast? Uh, or like many things, if you guys have any issues. Everything okay, I presume? Okay. Okay. My Android studio close. Oh God, I think the Android is just acting up today because uh, is this just a design page? Yes. So this is where you design your user interface. Here is where you can put whatever you want and it'll show up directly in your uh, on the Android emulator. Okay, any other questions? For some reason, I can't see the Zoom chat. All right. Uh, changing where? Okay, nope. So that's the thing. So if you want any changes to work, so this will be part of your next, the next session. But if you want any changes to happen based on code, the back end would be in this part. So you can usually uh, link buttons to change text from uh, the from the uh, code here. So everything you need to do, you need to change it using the uh, code here. Like that is for the next session. Okay, so let's just move on. So I'm going to give you uh, an explanation of what this contraption is. So the first thing is the project window, like I said, and then we have the views. This is, there are two types of views. The first is the normal layout, and this is the blueprint view. So the blueprint view will, it's just used for a uh, very complex stuff, which we will explain to you in the future sessions but we'll just focus on the uh, layout view first. 
So if you want to switch to just the normal design view, you can just use this button and uh, switch to whatever view you want to see. All right. Okay. And next we have the palette. The palette contains a plethora of views. So I'll just open this for you. So you can see like we have a bunch of different views that you can choose from like radio buttons. And then we have check boxes, stuff like that. We have a bunch of uh, views that you can use to uh, actually like play around and design your app. All right. So the next is the component tree. So this, uh, the component tree is uh, what is uh, quite important because it, it shows you the hierarchy in which elements are placed. So I'll get back to the component tree when we're adding an image and well, let's just uh, keep that for now. And then finally we have the attribute section. Like if you click on this or any view, uh, you can edit the attributes related to it. Like you can like, for example, change the height, uh, width, and uh, we can go all the way down and we can change uh, the text font, the size, the color, everything, bold, italic, you name it. You can, you can change it on the attribute section, but you have to make sure that you click on the element first. Okay. Okay, so let's, Let's head on to the first task. So let's change the, let's add a new view. Um, by the way, are you guys okay? I'm just gonna keep asking. Okay, Maisha, awesome. Uh, everyone else okay so far? Okay, awesome. Okay, so let's let's start off with first. Um, let's change hello world. Like I'm pretty sure, like you must be bored of seeing that. So let's change hello world. So I can zoom in using the plus and minus here. So I'll change this. The way I should change it is I can either double. Uh, sorry, I first the, click on the element. I go to. Uh, the attribute section and I'll, I'll head on over to declare attributes and below that I can see hello world here. So over here I can change it to like happy Valentine's Day. I can put whatever I want and as soon as I click out it will uh, show me the changes immediately. Okay. So are you guys okay so far? Okay, nice. Okay. Okay, so you can change it once you click on the, uh, once you click on the view, you go to the attribute section and you click on declared attributes and you can see the text, the last element, which is text, and you can edit it to whatever you want. No worries. Okay, so now when you run the, rerun the app, this is what you get. Go, done. So, yep, so that's, uh, that's the first part. I hope like uh, at least a bunch of you were able to get Happy Valentine's Day here printed out. Okay, let's move on to the next part. Okay, so over here you can see your emulators here. You can see any device. Uh, if you if you have already downloaded the emulator, you oh, you'll be able to see it over here, uh, like so, Pixel 3a, whatever it is, and then you click on this play button, run app. Once you get this message, 
look at this and yeah it would open on a separate window okay so let's move on to the next part let's add some text views what's the warning yes a uh, nice question let's uh that's gonna be covered uh in the next this part actually so let's let me yeah okay so let's just let's continue on with the lesson so to begin with let's delete this current view and to do that you just select it once again and delete uh, either using the delete, press the delete key and you should just be able to delete it all right so let's add a new text view so from the palette you can actually choose from either common or in text you drag and drop a text view element here okay and then okay once you're done with that you're gonna have this bigger warning now you're gonna have this warning because uh, so uh, if you recall in the beginning of the workshop we talked about uh, the num uh, so I showed you the number of the distribution of Android uh, devices so you might like so you know like there's a there's almost a billion there's more than a billion android devices uh, out there and all of them have different screen sizes right so to cater to that problem we actually have uh, we actually work with layouts and we add constraints so constraints helps to hold the item together if you just leave it like this if you just leave it in the middle and uh, you would assume that you're gonna assume that uh, the item would just stay in the middle when you run it but let's see what happens so this is what happens when you just leave it so what happens is that if you don't add a constraint which i'll be explaining what it is later um, the text view whatever you place uh, it'll just jump to zero zero in the screen. So this is point zero zero in the screen. So it's just gonna jump there. So how do we fix that? So in order to fix that, let's look at what it is. It just says that we're missing constraints. So in order to fix that, we gotta click on your text view, move it to where we want to first, and then we have these circles. These circles allow us to, to add a constraint. So you can either press and hold and then put it on top and then to the side, or you can click on this, you go to the layout part and then click on the plus here and the plus here. So now what happens is that the text view it gets attached to this layout. Um, so do you guys have questions? I like, do you guys understand what I'm saying or does it sound gibberish? All right. So basically what happens is that when, when you just leave an element without any constraints, when you leave anything without constraints, it's simply floating around it doesn't know where its original position is so what happens is when you run the emulator it's going to jump to this position and that's why uh, that's why it showed up here even though we placed it in the middle okay so in order to hold it down or to in order to like make sure it doesn't move around and if and it should be able to fit the billions of screens we actually have to put it to wherever we want to and then we add constraints so constraints are like ropes it holds it it holds the uh, it holds the text view uh, into the group so this is the group and uh, the, the constraint layout is called the group and the text view is the element inside the group so what we do is 
So we click on the text first and we add a constraint. So what happens when you add a constraint is that it will get attached to this group, the constraint layout group, which is the most, uh, the, the, mo the first element in the hierarchy. So um, am I making sense to you now, Maisha? Or oh, is it a bit confusing? All right, awesome. So once we anchored, so like we anchored the text to the top left, exactly. Yes. So once we anchored the text to wherever we want it, we can actually move it around and we can see this number changing here and there. That's so. Can you see this number? This number is actually the amount of padding we use. It's like a padding, uh, the amount of white space we want. So, as the tutorial says, we'll keep it at 16 dp. And now, um, now this will be uh, so now on whichever screen you open, like if you open this even on an Android phone or tablet or whatever it is, this will always be 16 from the top and 16 from the left. So do you get that concept? So it's like adding a margin, uh, yeah. Okay, so now let's just change the text. And uh, so in order to change the text, once again, let's change it to like happy Valentine's Day. And we can see this change automatically. So you guys, are you guys all okay so far? Okay, awesome. So let's add a. So obviously, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not fun just sending Happy Valentine's Day. We need to tell who it's from. So let's add another text tree for that, and let's put it all the way down. And just like before, we need to, we need to anchor it to the corners of the screen. All right. So let's anchor it to the right and the bottom. And once again. We'll keep it at 16, so it's like, you know, pleasant to see. And then let's, let's, let's say who it's from. So I'm just going to put my name. Okay, and now you can see it's updated. And let's, okay, let's rerun the app and see what happens. So did you, so, okay. So if you reach this step, congratulations, you've added and positioned elements in the UI. So I hope it's all okay so far. So you guys all reach this step. I you guys are still, uh, yeah. If you guys are still a few steps behind and need a bit of explanation, feel free to ask Akhil. Just unmute yourself yeah. uh, or drop your question on the chat, and then. Why is my app still showing? Why is hello? my app it, it still might be, showing "Hello World"? It could be because that it it takes a few seconds to uh, re reload the app. Okay, so I hope you guys are all okay so far. Hi, I can't seem to change the words. I uh, okay. I click the text and yeah. Mm -hmm. And then once you click the text, did you uh, go to the attribute section? Where is that? Uh, in this section, the right hand side is the attributes. Oh, section. declare attributes. Uh. 
Uh, yes, under declared attributes, you have this element called text. I see. Oh, text. Ah, okay. Yeah, you can edit it here. Or if it's not, if, it, if you can't see it there, you have to go all the way down. And once again, in common attributes, you'll have text. Oh, okay. Then do I just press enter and then it will change? Yep. Try it. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. No worries. Is it okay for me to terminate the app running and then the new words only appear in the emulator? Um, you, can, uh, you can click this and what this will do is it will reflash the app and restart it. Uh, if not, you can just stop. If it doesn't work, you stop using this and then play once again. Okay, so let's go on to the... Okay, so this, just this is gonna be boring. This is just gonna bore everyone. So let's add some style. So where do you think we can find styles? Does, does anyone want to take a rough guess where we can edit the styles? Absolutely. Thank you, Mon. Yes, so once you select the text, you, you can either select the text using the component tree or the UI, UI itself. Once you select the text, you can actually go down to common attributes and you'll find a plethora of changes that you can make. So let's, let's start, let's make some changes, yeah? So I feel like I need, I need the text to be bigger. So let me go with the size first. Let's go for 36. Okay, and yeah, and then let's, I feel like this font is just too formal. So let's go with a different font family. So there is a bunch of it. If you click more fonts, you can click more fonts and there'll be a bunch of it, but I'll just go with casual. So it seems very chill. So, okay. So you can play around and change, change all the fonts you want and see how it will appear. And yeah. And I feel like this gray is not my cup of tea. I want black. So let's just go with black. We'll change the color. You can either change it using this, uh, this color grid, or you can uh, specify a specific colors like type black and choose whichever one. So this is the Android black. And yeah. Uh, everyone okay so far? Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna have it, I'm gonna change the thing for the bottom one as well. Okay, awesome. So I hope everyone is up to here. And with that, we've actually reached the end of the first part. And you guys, if you guys are not able to uh, get up to here, you guys later on, you can go through the solution code provided in the link itself. So it's, it's provided over here, the solution. So you can follow these instructions to import that project. So I hope you guys uh, were able to get here so far. So let's move on to the next segment. So before that, I'm taking questions. Do you guys, anyone stuck anywhere? Uh, 
Hello. Yeah. Um, the words was on my phone for like five seconds, and now it has disappeared. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. You you uh you ran it you ran it on your emulator, right? Yeah. Okay, so okay, sometimes the emulator can crash. Uh, not sometimes, a lot of the times the emulator can crash. So what you do is you stop and restart, and it should be back again. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do I press so, Control okay. X or how do I restart in this program? Do I literally uh, you, close everything? No, no, no. You can close. You can press this stop app. Can you see my screen? Uh, I, I can see, but where are you pointing it? Okay, my pointer, and then I'm moving here. This one, stop app. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then you will get the triangle again, so you can start it once again. Yeah. Okay, let's look at our app. Wow. Okay, so all the font has changed, and you know, it's still, it's still showing. Uh, it's still showing a very, uh, it's still showing the padding that we placed. So awesome. So you guys can play around and move it around wherever you want and uh, go with the flow, yeah? Okay, so it's, I feel like this app is still very bland. So for those following, um, you guys can first um, download uh, an image, perhaps a, a free stock image that you want to put in the card and then uh, let's continue. So, so for me, I downloaded, I think I downloaded this one. So to match with the theme, but if you guys are going with the, uh, ha with strictly with the, um, if you are following this, the post very strictly, you'll probably use the birthday example. And you can download that image using this link uh, here. All right. So, wait, I'm getting an error call. Okay, good. Uh, we'll we'll deal with that uh, issue in the in this session. Yeah. Okay. So let's begin with uh, the picture now. So I want this. It's too bland. It's too boring. Okay, so let's first, uh, I hope you guys downloaded the picture and you all know where it is. So let's begin by importing a drawable. So to, in order to import an image, you can, uh, you need to first go to view, tool windows, and then we have to go to resource manager. And you will get this window right here. Are you guys all here so far? Uh, let me just put the, the, the location in the text box. Uh, view. Okay, tool windows. And then resource manager. Uh, you guys here? Okay, so let's go on. And the first thing you need to do is click this add button and uh, choose import drawables. And then you choose the particular uh, particulars. I hope you guys use us, uh, any, you can download whatever image you want. So you choose that image and click open. And yeah, it doesn't, you don't have to do anything. Just go to next and import. Awesome. And you'll see it over here. All right. And uh, then once you get to this stage and you can see it, you can just close this window using this 
you can uh, use this to hide. Okay. Okay. So now, if you want to look at that image again, it's going to be over here. You go to res drawable and you can see your image in the project over here. All right. That is only if you want to see where the where that went. Okay, so let's go on to uh, put an image on the screen. So before anything, let's first we need to uh, attach an image view onto your uh, application, and then choose the particular image that you want, and it's gonna pop up like so. Any questions so far, guys? Uh, I restarted, but the words are still not there. La. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. okay. Let me just uh, get back to you in a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Just hold Later. That down, yeah? yeah. Okay, sure. Okay. <laughs> okay, so in the meantime, you can actually play around with this. Yeah, let's do that later. In the meantime, you okay. do this. Okay, so I'm going to do the. Uh, I'm going to show the image step again. So from the palette, you choose an image view. And drag and drop it onto your screen. And then select the image and click OK. So, Sherry, were you able to click on this? All right, awesome. Okay, so of course it's, we, I uh, like you recall earlier, remember we anchored the text views to the screen, right? The same goes with, uh, we can't seem to import the picture. Uh, can you tell me what it says? Uh, Ji Ying, if you don't mind uh, opening your mic and explaining. Um, so on my end, view. I yeah, click image view. Then, um, what next? Yeah. Okay, so you first drag the image view to the center, and then okay. you should get this. Ah. Okay. Yes. And then you choose whatever image and click OK. So just like before, we're getting the we're gonna get the same error. The image view is not constrained, meaning it's just floating in the app. So uh, do you guys remember what you should do? Uh, anyone? Heading. Anchoring. How to, yes, absolutely. Set constraints, absolutely right. So, okay, um, yeah. And then, um, so once we do that, we need to first, okay, so first ideally you're gonna adjust the image. So like, okay, you know how uh, it goes. My, my image don't appear. And there's nothing oh, under constraint. Okay. It might take a few seconds if it's the first time. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so, <laughs> no worries. So, like I said, we'll we'll set the constraint. We position it how we like it, and then we set constraints. Okay, and then. Uh, I like to do the lazy way, so I'm just going to click on the constraint and it's going to add all the constraints for me. Okay, so you notice that, you know, all the constraints, constraints are zero. And the reason for that is because I don't want any margins uh, for the image. So like you said, there's a margin on the text, but there's no margin for the image. All right. So once we, now we, now that we've added the constraints, Let's go ahead 
and uh, okay so right now this image is like it's like like if i if i run this on the app it's going to be very uh, like it's not going to be it's going to be like i cut it short so there's actually an option on android studio that allows you to fully cover the fully cover the, the cover the whole screen with the image so let's go to that so for that you need to click on the image first all right and go to common attributes and you see this setting called scale type all right so what you do is you click on scale type and click center crop and voila like full screen so yeah my image is overlapping the text yeah it's okay okay so you guys see like uh so you guys see now okay do you guys see any problems with this like do you guys have any uh, problem with this uh anyone from you can open your mic and tell me anyone know what the problem with this is yes yeah what is it it's overlapping the text yes you can't see the text at all like it's completely gone so so like i said so let's fix that and in order to fix that we need to go to the component tree so the component tree x uh, will show you the hierarchy of the images or, or of all the view elements that's on the page so in order to fix that i simply just click on the image and i drag it to the top and keep it at the top of the hierarchy so do you guys understand do you guys understand what happened just now yeah, basically it's, it's like, like layers it's like layers yes. yeah and yeah and the topmost layer is the constraint layout which holds which holds all the views and that's why this all of this is called a view group so it's a group of views so the constraint layout holds a groups of views you guys understand all good right so far so basically okay, we need so we put the uh, text all the way to the top because we need it to be on the topmost layer on top of the image that's why it's on top of yep. the list and then comes the image and stuff like that yeah okay so in order to make the so if you want to make the the, the thing uh, the the image full screen you click on the image first you scroll down to common attributes and you see an option called scale type and you choose center crop and it should uh, make it full screen okay awesome okay so now i think a lot of you have been asking like oh no what's the problem here like why does it why are we having so many issues like why does why do we have issues detected okay so the thing with um, so re if you recall from the coding session before in kotlin uh, we don't programmers uh, it's a bad habit to repeat code right and uh, for example like if you if you if i was going to juggle your memory again it's going to be that thing where you you set the age as a variable uh instead of repeating number 5 everywhere so the same concept applies here like as a programmer hard coding is one of the worst things you can do so that's why <laughs> that's why it shows as an error so in order to fix that you just click on the the issue and let's let's go to fix here and then click the button fix and once that appears like so just like how you gave a variable name in the in the uh, previous coding session you give this uh, happy valentine's day a variable name 
for example, you can just call it that and you click OK. And you see, just like that, you sorted one issue. So let's do the same thing again for the next part. Uh, are you guys okay so far? Am I, have, did I go too fast? Okay, I'll just take that as okay. And um, yep, and the final part is what we'll do it once again. Signature, and we call it like that. And just like that, we solved the issues. So, yes. And the reason for that is because uh, when you just when you just type something on uh, Android Sphere in a text view, uh, it Android will assume that you're hard coding it, and hard coding is always bad. Whether you're a beginner or a pro level coder, it's always hard coding is something that you always try to avoid. So if you want to see what you just the, what you just did, uh, I'll show that to you in a bit. So if you want to see uh, like where, where this gets stored is you go to values and you go to strings. And over here, you can actually see what you did. So happy Valentine's Day was the name and what it holds. So this is where like in earlier in Kotlin, you had a variable holding the variable holding the value. The same applies here, but the concept is a bit different. This is in XML. So all you have to know is that whatever, whatever you save as a name, it will be saved in this file, the strings.xml. So it holds whatever you want. Like for example, even if I put another text field, okay. Even if I put an untext field, uh, if I want to fix this, I can just call it test and it will automatically update here. And you can see that here. So it just holds the name of that. Uh, what It just holds the name of the text you write. All right. So you guys okay so far? Are you guys all okay? Okay, so there's one more issue. We'll fix that as well. So this happens because um, there's, so, okay, so the reason for this error is this is an image view and Android will want to know if you're gonna reuse this image anywhere. And if you're gonna reuse it anywhere, you need to, again, oops. Uh, it's 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 the same issue. It's it feels like this image was hard coded. Okay, so in order to fix that, you just click on the image, and you go once. Wait, by the way, oh sorry. How do you change the text? You just edit it in string. Okay, so if you want to edit it, whatever the changes you want to make. You have to, uh, whatever changes you want to make, you can change it over here. So now let's look at the changes happening, all right? Uh, let me just give you an example. So let's say you want to change from Akil. You just change it over here. You can change it over here and it will just automatically adapt the change. You understand? So that's why you don't hard code it. When you don't hard code it, you can actually just simply change it from the from wherever you create the variable. You guys did that? Uh, Shamretan Balendran, do you get it? Awesome. Okay, so that is that. And let's just fix the issue with the image. Okay, so the, the thing is first, in order to fix the issue with the image, we just first click on the image first. 
and go to the attributes section and scroll to all attributes and you should find something called important for uh, important for accessibility and you just click and press no and then just like that uh, the image if you should go what is this once again okay okay so have you guys all got got here so far awesome cherry okay so uh, i hope you guys um, have finally like come here and just like that we've actually reached the end so awesome so i hope you guys had fun doing this so before anything let me just tell you one more thing so the solution like if if any case you were not able to uh, get this screen the solution is also there you can again download it and open it using android studio okay the text error is you click on that uh, okay let's let's create a new text for me to visualize the text error yeah okay so this i'm just going to uh, use this text view to fix the error again so you click on this uh, the try the the error triangle and then you go to fix and then you just you just have to give the resource any name like just give it any name like for example your name or whatever it is and once you give once you give a name once you give a name, uh, it should appear in the strings.xml file. And yeah, and just like that, you fix the error. Okay, so I hope all of you guys had fun. So before we finish, let's just, let's run this and see what happens. Let's give it a few seconds. Okay, awesome. Did you guys all get this screen? I hope most of you are able to get this. How to fix the image. Oh, yeah, sure. So the image error, all you have to do is you click on the image. You just click on the image from constraint layout. You go down to all attributes and then you search for important for accessibility. And then you click no, and then it should fix on its own. Uh, Shula, uh, sorry, Lim, were you able to get it? okay nice so this is the end product and that also is the end of this workshop and you can go through the thing uh, you can go through the workshop as many times as you want and practice on your own and change everything just go nuts with the whole attribute section play play around with the text view the image view and I'm pretty sure this must be something exciting like for most of you and play around with this as much as you can and uh, yeah and I'll pass it on to Sajid now and uh, thank you all for coming and this is just session one so I hope that this session was very informative and gave you a look into how Android coding is done uh, as for me, the first time I did it, it was very, you know, surprising. Just like Shawan said, when these, uh, the virtual 
device appeared, I was actually stunned. Um, I'm pretty sure some of you were too. So for those who uh, actually were able to complete the workshop today, congratulations. Uh, for those who got stuck in between, you can always uh, refer back to the video recording or you can also go through the tutorial step by step. And um, just before you leave, there is the link that was sent earlier uh, for feedback. So like anything, there's always space to improve. So if there's anything positive, please leave something positive. Or if there's something you feel needs to be improved so that the next session could be more productive and uh, more efficient, please leave your suggestions there too. Uh, the link is in the chat box. And in conclusion, I think, um, thank you guys for coming, for staying all this time. And have a great day.